Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of the Digital Mitesh Tant. My name is Jan, and I help small and medium businesses, so Mitesh Tant, to overcome their digital transformation challenges. Today, I have Shanai Lelich with me, and he will talk about the new normal for Mitesh Tant. Shanai is the founder of One Assist, and he is the Microsoft MVP for the last 20 years. He's a natural born presenter and without any further ado. Hello, Shanai. Welcome to the show. Hi, John. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. Can you please introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. My name is Shanai Lelich. I'm the managing director of One Assist GmbH, and we're in the business since 1991, helping customers Broadly speaking, about visualization of organizational information, a little bit more narrowing down, that means every type of corporate information and communication which needs to be standardized and visualized to everybody in the organization or company, that's our topic. So one main topic we have very often is business process documentation and visualization, of course, since that is something which you want to communicate inside of the organization, but that also goes out to let's say, org charts on the high-level base and combination of visualization with metadata. So the data visualization is our speciality. Thank you for the introduction. And although you are based in Berlin and Munich, your company, I mean, uh, I know you have a lot of international clients as well, uh, but you also have clients from the Mittelstand. And uh, I know, and you are also doing various digitalization projects for them. Which trends do you see changing uh, in the Mitteshtand, especially after COVID came? Okay, so uh, yes, we have customers literally from Australia to the US and everything in between. And actually, most of our customers are indeed Mittelstand. We do have, of course, several large uh, corporate customers, but Mittelstand is quite, quite a huge amount of our customers. So what do we see? Well... <laughs> I think COVID showed that most of the Mittelstand was completely unprepared for something like this. So the problem with uh, the problem with the Mittelstand is that, let's say, digitalization and uh, adapting quickly to some changes has been something companies have never tried or exercised because most of Mittelstand had a really hard time to adapt quickly to some of the changes of COVID, but. My personal opinion, and that's what I tell them when I talk to the managers, the CEO, CIOs, etc., is COVID did not create this problem. COVID showed you only in a very brutal and fast way that it was there. So I think if one COVID, I mean, I see COVID also as a positive thing. I mean, it has many negative factors, but I see the chance in COVID. And the chance in COVID is that they face, embrace, and solve these problems. So it was like a Röntgen showed the situation inside the companies. Yeah, they figured out that they, for example, were far behind digitalization. They figured out that they were far behind keeping their infrastructure in a way that it can work for everybody from everywhere. They had to realize that, you know, they have to trust their employees that when they work from remote, they still work. So it's, it's many of these things in combination. But do you see those trends are changing right now, as oh, I understand? They have, to. they have to. In all the German republics, the companies have to send at least a huge amount of their workforce home. So they have to work from home. So the bosses need to build up trust. And actually, they find out that it really works rather well. I'm quite happy to hear that. And mm -hmm. then how would you define the new normal uh, especially for the German Mittelstand. You see many people say, we want to go back to where we were before. Actually, that is not something I think that should even be desired because not everything which was before was necessarily better than what we have today. I think the COVID pandemic has done more for the digitalization of the educational system and the Mittelstand than all the government decisions in the 20, 30 years before and all the management decisions in the companies in the same uh, time frame. So what's the new normal? I think the new normal will definitely include also the ability for people to decide 
where do they work? That of course won't work for everybody. If you're in the production, somebody needs to stay there and do the production. But for most, what Microsoft, for example, calls information workers, they can literally choose from where they work because now we know that the infrastructure is there, is reliable and working. So technologies like cloud, technologies like remote access. I remember just a few years ago, and we're not talking like 20 years ago, what a huge effort it was for me to get just a simple access to a corporate network of a customer where we were supposed to do some work. And they, they, I thought that the organizational part, like the signing, NDA, et cetera, was the drift, uh, big problem. And they said, no, no, that's, that's easy. The problem is really technically doing it. So they didn't that, have the infrastructures in place, you mean? They didn't have the infrastructure ready for remote work. Their full infrastructure was organized and, let's say, around working on site. And they didn't even think about, seriously, they were talking about it, but seriously about working remotely. Now, COVID has forced them to build up the infrastructure, to make it possible, and to allow people to work remotely because they had to. And now they see it works great. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this is, as you said, the benefit of COVID. But you said information workers. How should we understand information workers? So who are those people in a typical Mitesh stand? I would seriously say everybody who's working with an office and a PC. So who's not in production. I mean, those who are going out as salespeople to customers, that's a different thing. But these people, even in the past, have been working mostly remotely because they were supposed to be with customers and not sitting in the office. So um, let's say everybody is a little bit more of a sales type person not being permanently in the office. Yeah. So, and uh, these are, I mean, everybody who's not in production, for example, somebody who needs to control the machine on site, of course, that will be difficult. But everybody else, accounting, IT, and all the other stuff, they can work from everywhere. Yeah, and uh, as you said, the companies have seen that it works when it's remote and people are reliable doing their work, most of them, I believe, as well. So this is a perk that COVID has accelerated maybe 10 years fast forward. I don't know. I would if say I'm not, more than 10 years. <laughs> if I'm not exaggerating, but you confirmed that by saying more than 10 years. So, um, yeah, but uh, you said you have clients from uh, Australia to the US and every almost, uh, yeah, in between. And of course, and, in Germany. Yeah, yeah. But um, when it comes to digitalization, are there any learnings from those countries that German Mittelstand can apply to their work environment? I think one of the most important one is you need to speed up your digitalization efforts. Because, you know, in the German Mittelstand, I saw very often that digitalization was something they had on their agenda, but not like a top priority, like a, yeah, one day we also need to do this type of uh, priority. And I think they definitely need to take this as a number one top priority and execute on it. So, Whatever that means, I'm not saying that from tomorrow on, most of the Mittelstand companies should work only from remote and only from the home office. I personally consider working in the office a very, very important and vital component, not because they couldn't do the thing at home, but because of the team building and synchronization. And that is something where remote only will not work. You will not be able to have the same team spirit, the same art type of interaction and date let's say information exchange remotely as you have in the office when you say, hey, let's go grab a coffee and have a talk, et cetera. It's this type of social socialization which will not work digitally. Yes, uh, but as you mentioned, that's so important to have the ability to let them work remotely, but also creating a hybrid ecosystem that they choose to work and which means giving them the flexibility and freedom. So eventually this will increase the employee satisfaction. So this has more, more, more. You see, one more. company, which I take always as an example, is Microsoft themselves. When the pandemic started, Satya Nadella, the CEO, said explicitly, this is just temporary. Everybody will come back into the office again. About a few months ago, three, four months, something like that, he announced who wants to come back to the office can come back to the office. But for those who want to work remotely permanently, and move somewhere else because they don't want to pay the high rental prices in the Seattle area, we will even pay them the relocation. 
they will have to, let's say, agree to a reduction of their uh, monthly payment. But for most of them, this means a huge increase, increase in payment because if they move somewhere else, the rental is so cheaper that they still get more money at the end than if they stay in the in the area around Seattle and all the other areas. Uh, well, Redmond, etc. So it's not necessarily negative, but I still think that team building and team spirit is something which you cannot keep and have at the same level if people are working permanently from remotely. However, and that is, I think, the big... And I, I think over a few years, this will equalize a little bit again we will down, see yeah. that some people will say you know from one day to the other today i stay at home tomorrow i get into the office today i stay at home tomorrow and they will be able to work in the same way with the same quality so it won't be you have to go into the office it is a you can go into the office now if i can take one assist as an example we were hit by the pandemic zero even from a work point of view because for us it was for five six seven years already completely normal to have a fully equipped home office equipment i mean what do you need a monitor a computer and internet so if somebody felt sick lish like not sick but mm, could get sick they called in and said hey i'll work today from home because i don't want to infect you if i have flu or influenza or whatever so they worked from home and that for us has been a working practice for years already so when the pandemic now closed down the offices the only thing i said was okay now this is permanent for now and they said oh okay <laughs> yeah that's a great example of how you can prepare for such things but uh, you you mentioned something that digitalization is not only remote work Mittelstand, oh. for example, can prioritize digitalization by digitalizing their sales activities or a lot of other things like production automation, audit automation, process automation. So there are a lot of things that can literally Let's do... Let's stop it earlier. Let's stop earlier, John, because uh, you see the sales process in many cases involve, even me, getting up at, getting up at 5 a.m., having a plane at 6 a.m., flying to the customer, having a meeting at 10 a.m., and then flying back at 2 or 3 uh, p.m. back to Berlin. Today, I have a Teams, Skype, Zoom, you name it meeting, which is from 10 to 11, and I don't have to travel. This also changed in the Mittelstand if they're in the customer role. They accept customer meetings as a Teams event or as a Zoom event. Before the COVID, that was unthinkable. You had to get there, to be there, to be present. Today, they say, well, we can't. So yeah, it's a, we it's do a even training example. Like, yeah, like software trainings. We do them today online. Of course, you can't do a digital training full day, the whole day. Nobody's able to concentrate digitally a whole day. So we split it in a third of a day pieces and do it that way. And it works nicely. Yeah. And again, I don't have to travel. They don't have to pay for hotels, which the hotels don't like. I don't have to pay for train or plane, which the current providers don't like. But in the end, it is a way more efficient use of time. Now, when it comes to trainings, I would immediately move back to in-person trainings on site the moment it's uh, uh, possible again, because there is nothing which can digitally even come close to the effectiveness of an on-site training. Same applies for customer workshops, like full-day workshops. There is nothing which comes close to a full day on-site meeting. But many other things like the small meetings, I mean, we're right now acquiring new customers uh, because they asked us for new projects and it's all done digitally and it works perfectly fine. Yeah, that's um, good, to, good to hear that a hybrid model will be the new normal, as you said, not only yeah. in uh, working, but also for trainings and customer workshops, which I believe yeah. also quite crucial. But then I will flip the question around and say what the countries outside of Germany can learn from German Mittelstand. That's not much right now. Um, because German Mittelstand, who was always the backbone of German industry, has become old fashioned over the last years. What can they learn? Stability, trust, These are things which are still valid in the German Mittelstand and which definitely could carry over into other countries. So I also think that we will see a huge wave of digitalization in the next two, three, four years. Because, you know, they made this mistake once. They will certainly, if they want to survive, not make the mistake a second time. 
So I would definitely say one thing you can learn is wake up, start the change. And I would also say the new normal is a hybrid of what we had before and some new things, but it's not everything new. It's not everything old. It's not going back. We don't even want that. It's not change everything. We don't even want that either. But we want to be in the middle where we optimize the resources because, you know, flying a plane twice a day, five times a week or even 10 times a month or so just to meet a customer for one or two hours or even being in the car the whole day just to meet a customer for a coffee and a half an hour and a talk. It's not very effective. And from a, let's say, helping the planet and saving the nature point of view, it's devastating. It's, so with this, we can help the nature to recover or use the resources more wisely. We can still do the business and even save our own resources. Because after such a day, get up at 5 a.m. or 4.30, fly there, be there, fly back. You're done after the day. Today, I do the meeting and I'm still fresh for the rest of the day. But I, I think uh, German Mitesh sound very innovative in what they produce generally. So they are oh, the market leaders, world leaders, and they can take this innovation the spirit of innovation applied into digitalization so that I am also thinking that in the next five years, we will see big jump in the digitalization of the German Mittelstand. Out of question. And I mean, once their services and products are available in a digital way, I'm not saying everything goes digital, but make it available in a digital way. The potential is huge because the business potential is there. The business power is there. Now let's just move to the new normal. And honestly, I can't wait to move to the new normal. I can't wait to have a new normal established and reliable and working and available because it opens way more possibilities than COVID closed. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that, that's a great highlight. It opens way more possibilities than uh, COVID closed. But uh, before we wrap up, what would be your top suggestion for Mittelstand owners or managers to apply right away? You see, I've, I've written an article, actually a series of two articles about business continuity and planning of business continuity. We will publish this with Microsoft on LinkedIn in a co-working effort. I mean, the text is from me, but Microsoft will add a few flavors. And I think the number one thing for executives today and tomorrow should be the, the thinking of business continuity. I'm not just saying about moving the server into the cloud. That's the technical part. It's the organizational part of business continuity. It involves stabilizing your processes, your business processes, but it also involves orienting your business into the future. I read an, uh, an analysis, uh, I think yesterday from Credit Perform. In average, German companies die after 16 years. So most of the companies we know today won't be there in 20 years anymore. Why? And this is the big question they need to ask themselves. How can we persist in a long-term future, in an endless game? It's not a, in two years, we do an exit, we sell the company and we go. We want to stay there for a long time. So it's an endless game we were dealing with. And the topics and the tasks in an endless game are different than in an exit game. This is not about 50% more revenue every year. This is about constant revenue over 10 or 15 or 20 years. Not too much fluctuation in the employees because every fluctuation always is negative. So if we have employees, for example, women who get pregnant, let's keep them working because, I mean, no woman who just gave birth to a child wants to be a mother 24 hours a day. She has her, her responsibilities, but she is happy to be able to do something else than just changing diapers. So let us create the infrastructure so such a person can still contribute to the organization. And with this, you create also long-term exactly. Exactly. connection. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for your input, Chennai. How people can find you? Well, we're OneAssist, www.oneassist.de or sl at oneassist.de, but I'm sure you will put that also under the video. <laughs> Definitely. And also on LinkedIn, right? Yeah, and on LinkedIn, um, I'm not trying to spell my name for everybody, so please check out... Um, I will put the QR code. Yeah. Chennai, <laughs> I am, I'm actually LinkedIn, in.chennai, so I'm the only one, but still S-E-N-A-J, and that's how you will find me. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input, Chennai. And yeah, uh, hope to talk to you soon. I would be delighted. Thank you very much.